Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. As you know, we're only doing two per month now, so I appreciate you hitting subscribe and hitting share and doing all of that good stuff, because the more you do that, <clears throat> the more we get, <clears throat> get everything out. Um, while people are trickling in, I do want to address the Donald Trump nuking the hurricane story. Because it keeps coming up again and again and again. And I wanted to be as clear with it as I could. This is, this is half the problem with the nuke industry in general. And I'll explain this in a second here. I guarantee, and obviously I'm a Trump supporter, but anybody that's followed this show knows that I do not agree with Donald Trump when it comes to matters of the nuclear industry. He's simply wrong. There's right and there's wrong, and he's wrong. I also guarantee that I know more about nuclear technology than Donald Trump does. Does that mean I think he's an idiot? No, absolutely not. Hey, Jermaine. But I do think that when it comes to areas of study, this is not one that he has copious amounts of time having spent in. And I think that matters because then he gets advice from the very people who are being fed what we already have proven here, quite a track record every month, to be faulty information. Is it a good idea to blow up a storm with a nuclear weapon? No, it's not. Um, one of the reasons that people have debated this, and he was questioning um, work that had been done by other administrations. They've been thinking about this since we uh, broke, uh, since we divided the atom. And that's been more true after Bikini and Knoll, where, you know, the, the huge, huge explosion. Fallout is an obvious issue. Unfortunately, fallout is often downplayed by people who support the industry. So really high dangerous levels will be fed off as somehow safe. Even though when this was originally discovered back when the Manhattan Project and things like that were under development, they, they had much lower levels of what they considered safe. But once they needed to sell the peaceful atom to everyone, and particularly after Fukushima, then you found them saying more and more levels were safe and so on, and they're anything but. But anyway, no, it won't work. Um, it would create a major issue with, with fallout. And above and beyond that, you would have, you can't move enough air. And that's important. Um, in theory, hey, what's up, Lindsay? In theory, you could probably create more harm than good. And I say that because you you could use something like Moab or Foab. For those of you that don't know, that's mother of all bombs and father of all bombs. Um, they were developed by Russia and America. They are the biggest non-nuclear bombs known to man. In theory, you could do that, but you don't move enough air even with those two for that to be something that could be beneficial. You also don't move enough air even with a nuclear weapon, and the reason that would create more harm than good is now you would have this radioactive storm hitting land, particularly, hey, Oliver, particularly if it doesn't break up the storm. So for the reasons I have just given, it is a terrible idea. But I wanted to open the show with it because that is the kind of ridiculous thinking, Ollie. That's the kind of ridiculous thinking that comes about when you when you start reading the facts that are the supposed facts that are given by the nuclear industry. Well, it might be a good idea to nuke a hurricane. No, it's not. All right, getting into the Fukushima news. This is from Tech Explore. A Fukushima nuclear plant out of space for radioactive water. Again, this is why I opened the show that I the way I did. Helen Caldicott has wisely said, uh, dilution 
is not the solution to pollution. And what, what the doctor means by that is when you're talking about, for instance, plutonium has a half-life of 24,000 years. That doesn't dilute in the oceans. I got this bonehead on my comment line that said to me, well, don't you know they've dumped barrels of nuclear waste in the Pacific Ocean? So that's a great reason for us to put more in? That makes no sense to me. It's like uh, when uh, the Italian leader, Salvini, was trying to prevent the mass influx of very harmful elements of radical Islam from coming into Italy. People had said, well, don't you know Italy, uh, Italy already has problems? Look at, you know, they have crime right here and there. All right, because they have a section of their own people who are criminal, they should just welcome in those others who might be as well. That's the same line of thinking here that says, well, let, might as well let TEPCO do it. Other people have done it. Yeah, that's great. You played Russian roulette. You, I mean, somebody pulled a gun on you once and they didn't pull the trigger. So why don't you go home and play Russian roulette too? And again, these stupid ideas begin to become part of what people believe. So you get someone in office and they start talking about nuking the hurricane because they don't truly understand how bad nuclear fallout is on the ocean. And they tend to think that way because of stories like this. It says the utility company operating Fukushima's tsunami devastated nuclear power plant has said Friday that it will run out of space to store massive amounts of contaminated water within three years. Now that was said <clears throat> on the, uh, that would, I mean, this, this whole, this story here is just posted less than a month ago. There, they, they, remember we were told that they were no longer thinking about this. That was an abject lie. They're absolutely still thinking about this. Three reactors at the floor, well, we know what happened at the plant. Three reactors at the plant suffered meltdowns. Our radioactive water has leaked from the damaged reactors and mixed with groundwater and rainwater at the plant. The water is treated but remains highly radioactive and is stored in tanks. Now, the problem here is twofold. Because let's, let's look at the first problem. First of all, they want to release it into the ocean. That, that's its obvious problem. Um, people have said that there is no die-off in the Pacific Ocean, even though when you look at the pictures from, I mean, I don't, I don't mean pick a deliberate off-season when nothing's growing. Um, look, look at the, the life in the ocean has drastically dropped off, and they have yet to pull a tuna out that hasn't been radioactive. Oh, it's safe. It's not, depending on what is it. What is it that you're ingesting? If you're ingesting a bit of plutonium, that is probably someday going to manifest itself in cancer. Are you ingesting some an element maybe that dies away quickly, in which case it might not be as bad? That's a dumb thing to say. Um, the, the bigger problem here is that, let's face it, Russia is pretty much an iceberg. So Chernobyl, while it is terrible, isn't going to be quite the same problem forever with them as it will be for Japan. And the reason is that Japan was created by an earthquake and a tidal wave, and one day they're going to be destroyed by an earthquake and a tidal wave. Now, again, look up the half-life of radioactive uranium or plutonium. You are talking about 24,000 years. I think some elements can have a half-life of over a million years. Even if they don't dump the water into the ocean, which I'm against, what are they going to do with it? You could say move it to Russia, since, you know, move it move it to the where they want to bury some of the uh, radioactive waste in Finland. Okay. Hey, Steve. That sounds great. Until... You, who wants to move it? How many countries want that going through their water on the way to Finland? 
you see the ongoing problem here. So they're going to, if they leave it there, it's liable to end up in the ocean anyway. This is just some of the reasons why nuclear technology is just a death sentence. Even when it's running properly, can God forbid something like this happen? The plant has accumulated more than 1 million tons of water in nearly 1,000 tanks. And again, some of the tanks have rubber seals, which is leaking, which are leaking because they weren't built properly. Um, experts say the tanks pose flooding and radiation risks and hamper decommissioning efforts at the plant. So they're going to throw it into the ocean and pretend it's not hurting anything is what they're going to do. Most of people trying to, to, to surf in Fukushima. TEPCO spokesman Junichi Matsumoto said contaminants from the decommissioning work should stay in the plant complex. He said long-term storage would gradually reduce radiation because of its half-life, but would de delay decommissioning work because of the necessary facilities cannot be built until the tanks are removed. They're talking about, this is another lie you will catch in the nuclear industry. Now pay attention to this. They will talk about radioactive elements which they know decay within a certain time. They won't talk about the ones that do not, which are also present. That is a, that's a common lie. Uh, moving on, friends, this is from LiveScience.com. The, link, the links and the sources for all these are in the descriptions. Just about everyone can see them. People ask, where are your sources? And sometimes a site will have the sources in the article. So I'm, I can't believe I have to describe this, but there are people that tell me in my comment line. All right, live science. Radioactive grain from Chernobyl has been distilled into vodka. Thrill seekers visiting the ruins of Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the Ukraine may soon be able to take a piece of the site's radioactive history home with them in their livers. Now, my dad died of liver cancer, and he was largely a non-drinker. He was what I call a Christmas New Year drinker. The, got his gallbladder first, and then got him. How does a non-drinker get something like that? Well, obviously, bomb testing, things that have been in the air. I would argue GMOs, too, and, and the poison that we put in our food. It's not all nuclear, but I think it all works together to a rather dreadful end. A team of scientists from the UK and Ukraine have just produced the first bottle of what they're calling atomic vodka. Let's give it a good name and people will be dumb enough to drink it. Artisanal spirits made from water and grain are harvested in the reactors once for the Through the one, the, uh, though the one thousand square mile zone surrounding the plant was initially declared uninhabitable by humans for 24,000 years following the meltdown in 86. The makers of Atomic assured BBC News that their product is no more radioactive than any other liquor on the market. The trouble is that many, many of the radioactive elements that are in that particular grain would only be radioactive elements that are produced by man. Many many don't know that. Some of the elements are actually man-made. They don't exist until we have put them through the nuclear process, if you will. So, you know, if you leave vodka sitting in the sun, don't advise it. If you leave vodka sitting in the sun and it gets radioactivity from the sun, that's not the same as ingesting some uranium from Chernobyl even though both of them may read as simply a radioactive element, depending on what kind of testing is being done. So needless to say, it's a stupid idea. You can't. Just one bottle of atomic vodka exists at the moment, but the founders hope to cap at least 500 others by year's end and sell them to thirsty Chernobyl tourists. You know, Darwin was wrong about evolution, but he certainly wasn't wrong about everything, was he? All right, guys, listen to this. Um, I'm just going to go over this quickly because I've been talking about this quite frequently. So has uh, Michael Snyder, um, who is uh, on this one. 
end of the American dream. This isn't normal. Kansas and Oklahoma have been hit by uh, 65 earthquakes within the last seven days as of August the 18th. Now, not only is this a good example of why nuclear technology isn't safe anywhere, but it's a good example for those who are believers of the earthquakes in diverse places. I think it's alarming that there have been studies done that show that nuclear power plants that are located near dams or major reservoirs could, in the instance of an earthquake, flood the plant in much the same way that Chernobyl got flooded, even though there, of course, not there's no oceanfront property in Oklahoma currently. The other issue is that the earthquake in Japan was responsible for one of the meltdowns that started even before the tidal wave hit. So the idea that only the tidal wave caused the entire Fukushima disaster is a lie. And with that in mind, it says, uh, we are, what are we supposed to think when rather large earthquakes start happening in places that aren't supposed to have earthquakes? Every place has plates, so there isn't any part of the Earth that is immune to it, but I know what he means. 2019 has been quite a year for seismic activity already, and I understand that we should expect to see earthquakes in diverse places, he writes. But if someone told me that the U.S. was just hit by a significant quake in one of the last places I would check would be Kansas. The state of Kansas is certainly known for a lot of things, but earthquakes is not one of them. Bob Dole. And that is why what we just witnessed is so startling. According to the Kansas City Star, one county in central Kansas alone has been hit by 11 quakes within the past five days. And then, of course, they also mention that uh, further south, Oklahoma has experienced even more earthquakes than Kansas over the past seven days. Overall, there have been 65 quakes between the two states within a week. It says uh, the Hutchins, uh, the TV station was told that this house shook and things fell off the walls. It's an earthquake. What do you think is going to happen? My point is that they're all over the place. California obviously has been saying them, and I, this plays into the issue of nuclear power plants. I'm not going to stay on it forever, so onward we go. But suffice to say, we have kept up on that during on this show, during the entire spat that's been rising here, and I want to thank Michael Snyder for a lot of his work. Um, the Baron Observer, I don't think I've ever had the Baron's Observer on here before. Locals say evacuation of nuclear testing area Noyoska is canceled, and that's August 13th. For the, I'm just going to gloss over this because the, the issue happened after I had already done the massive Fukushima update last month. Shortly after I did it, the issue happened in Orusha. And for those of you who may have, I don't know, been asleep at the wheel... Russia has been testing nuclear weapons, and they blew up a nuclear reactor that was being tested, basically a missile that had our name on it. Uncle Sam. The, um, <clears throat> the fallout for this, again, it's just like Chernobyl, just like Maybach. Do you know in Maybach, which was before Chernobyl and in some ways worse, they didn't let people know even as the skin was said to be sloughing from their bones. They hid it. But they hid Chernobyl. They hid this as well. 2019. They've learned nothing. Of course, now they're going to say how safe it is. But this is an ongoing problem. You would think by now that, let's face it, Russia would be the last place that should ever do anything nuclear ever again. They don't have the greatest track record here. This is, uh... 
Just keep racking them up there. Russia has nuked themselves far worse than anybody has ever come close to nuking them, even. And I know America has too, but nobody's nuked themselves quite as many times as Russia has. They, they, they win. Locals from the closed military settlement on the White Sea coast were early this week told that they would have to leave the area on Wednesday morning between 5 and 7 a.m. The evacuation was reportedly planned and had nothing to do with last week's missile explosion. No, of course not. According to the Russian military, we can trust them. Late Tuesday, however, the evacuation was canceled. Thank you. And all locals were allowed to stay home. Online newspaper informs. So, yeah, just stay home. There's nothing to fear here. Just smile at the radiation and it won't hurt you. Hey, that's what they said in Japan. Suffice to say, friends, that's this is not a good sign. But... It does appear that it wasn't as bad as it could have been. But I think it'll take some time. I don't think it's going to be you know, anything like Fukushima or anything, but I do think it'll take some time for us to truly grasp just how bad it is. But it's not a good sign. <sighs> Definitely not a good sign. Beyond nuclear, um, the false promise of nuclear power, I just want to hit on this for a brief moment here. Nuclear power is not clean, efficient, economical, or safe. This is by uh, Robert J. Lifton and Naomi Oreskes. And I thought that this was very important because we keep hearing about how safe nuclear technology is and uh, people coming up with bunk science and putting it out there as real science. Meanwhile, real science is you know, relegated to the dustbin. And I want to cover, there's many links in this article. Again, it's at beyondnuclearinternational.org. It's by Robert J. Lifton and Naomi Oreskes. So don't say that I didn't give any sources. There's many sources in this, and here we go. And you'll like some of the lies that come out here, too. Commentators from Greenpeace to the World Bank agree that climate change is an emergency. Well, that's a lie, but we're going to go with it. Threatening civilization and life of our planet. You know what's funny about that? We're going to get to why that's absolutely not true before the show is done here. However, I find it very strange that so many people on the left, and maybe those of you that are can explain this to me, those of you on the left are worried about what burning a little bit of coal might do to the planet while nuclear technology, when it runs as it should, changes the DNA of every living thing on the planet forever. Not in a good way. Mutates, not excels. Oh, but we like nuclear power because it stops global warming. First of all, it doesn't. Second of all, the lies that have been connected with it are insane, and we're going to get to a few of them here. According to the U.S. Energy Information Agency, the average nuclear power generating cost is about $100 per megawatt hour. Compare this with $50 per megawatt hour for solar and 30 or 40 megawatt for offshore wind. Yeah, but that's as unreliable as Al Gore. The financial group Lazard recently said that renewable energy costs are now at or below the marginal cost of conventional generation. There are deeper problems that should not be brushed aside. They have to do with the fear and the reality, reality of radiation effects. An issue is what can be called invisible contamination. The sense that some kind of poison has lodged in one's body that may strike one down at any time even in those who had deemed unaffected by a nuclear disaster. Nor is this fear irrational, since delayed radiation effects can do just that. Moreover, catastrophic nuclear accidents, however infrequent, can bring about more physical and psychological consequences on a vast scale says no technical system is ever perfect, but the vulnerability of nuclear power is particularly great. 
improvements in design cannot eliminate the possibility of lethal, that does mean deadly, meltdowns. These may result, it says, from extreme weather, from geophysical events such as earthquakes, volcanoes, and tsunamis. For future fail for technical failure and from unavoidable human error. Now let's look at some of the uh, uh, advocates of nuclear energy inevitably downplay the catastrophic events at Fukushima and Chernobyl. They point out that relatively few immediate deaths were recorded in these two disasters, which is true. But they fail. Now listen to this. They fail to take adequate account of medical projections. The chaos of both disasters and their extreme mishandling by authorities has laid, led to a great disparity in estimates, but informed evaluations, and there's links to them, in connection with Chernobyl, project project future cancer deaths at anywhere between several tens of thousands on the low end to half a million. That's real science. There is real science. Get rid of the bunk science. There is real science. Studies of Chernobyl and Fukushima also revealed crippling psychological fear of invisible contamination. Of course, you're going to have that, but you know, that's not going to kill you. Um, the contamination of actual and anticipated radiation effects, the fear of invisible contamination occurs wherever nuclear technology has been used. And that's largely because of the cancer rates that go up all around any place where it's been used. So I think a lot of the links in this work, again, beyond Net Nuclear International would be helpful to those of you that are somehow subscribing to the lie that nuclear is safe. Guys, we have just two stories left. I would like to remind you that this is listener supported, so please donate if you can at the correct views at hotmail.com. Now this story, I'm not going to read it all because it is very, very long. However, what I am going to do, I'll link to it in the description, and there are a few paragraphs which stand out quite significantly that I think would I think I would be remiss if I did not cover them for you. It's from the Observer. Again, it's a tome. And uh, the half-life of memory, unforgetting the American Chernobyl. And they're talking about Rocky Flats here. The last article talked about people in Rocky Flats uh, worrying about contamination. One of the places where it was used and was worried about. Well, that's, that, that's for good, good reason. And I'm going to go ahead and read the standout paragraphs here in this article that just needed to be read. Between the mid-1990s and 2005, the U.S. Department of Energy sought to undo at least some of this legacy, which means... Uh, Rockwell International pled guilty to environmental crimes. They admitted what they did. It's not conspiracy theory. They admitted to it. Local homeowners, it said, received $37 million for the radioactivity that hit their land. And um, it said, of course, the uh, buildings were demolished. Workers tucked away tons of radioactivity. What could not be removed was simply buried deep underground or left in situ where it will remain a risk as long as plutonium remains radioactive, which is roughly 24,000 years. I think there are a lot of parallels between Chernobyl and Rocky Flats, said Jeff Geip, a New York City-based artist who grew up in the Rocky Flats' literal shadow and whose father worked at the plant for decades. Everyone who watched the show Chernobyl is like, wow, I can't believe this, he said. And I'm like, wow, if you only knew what happened in America. And you keep time and time again running into this idea that
Russia was somehow alone in their folly, and that's simply not the case. Even uh, even now, uh, doctors warn about eating Hershey due to its proximity to the Three Mile Island disaster in Pennsylvania. I think everyone distances themselves. Wow, this couldn't happen here. We're better than that. And I honestly think that Americans would not be any better if a Chernobyl-like event occurred at Rocky Flats or anywhere else, um, said Guype. Anything that revolves around nuclear power or nuclear weapons, there is a continuum of lies. Repeat, anything that revolves around nuclear power or nuclear weapons, there is a continuum of lies. Let me repeat, continuum of lies. Where there is nuclear anything, it is very easy to see how the same thing could happen here. Sometimes I wonder how people do this ability to compartmentalize things in their heads just because they can't see a certain radioactive poison. Somehow it's not there or it's not bothering them. Here is where the story requires the necessary disclaimers. According to the federal and state governments, all remains well. State and federal environmental regulators insist that hiking at Rocky Flats is safe and that buying a home nearby is safe. They're selling homes there, yes. 24,000 years, half-life of plutonium, somehow it's magically safe. Repeated visits to the site subjects the visitor to no more radiation than a chest x-ray. How likely is it to inhale a speck of plutonium? That's hot particle. And introduce an alpha radiation emitting particle into your internal organs is not addressed. Now let me pause there. This may be the most important part of the entire freaking show. So do I have your attention? Please. If I do, say yes, I heard this. Tell me if you heard this in the comment line. You are not ingesting Alpha radiation emitting particles into you during a chest x-ray. Therefore, the next time someone says to you that something is no more dangerous than a chest x-ray, find out what they're smoking and try not to get any. It's bad weed. That's like saying... Well, you know, shot's not going to hurt you. It's just alcohol. Okay. D did you get the alcohol from scooping it out of the bottom of a uh, 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 corn silo? Because if so, it's going to be a lot stronger than the uh, watered-down stuff that you bought at the 7-Eleven. It's the same thing. It's a bad analogy, but you know what I mean. There are no alpha-emitting particles in a chest x-ray. If you inhale one of these, you're toast. So, how likely is it to inhale a speck of plutonium and introduce an alpha-radiation-emitting particle into your internal organs is not addressed. In part... Because as a group of experts, including retired and active professors of biology and chemistry at the University of Colorado and elsewhere, say, deducing that risk would require a study that would reveal facts which many prefer to remain unknown. How likely are you to inhale a hot particle? They won't even study it to let you know. Now, you still feel safe about everything? Because if you do, you're an idiot. Hot particles are far different than a chest x-ray. Think eating a banana. No, it's not. Not unless the banana was grown in Chernobyl, you idiot. Though tons and tons of hazardous material were removed. Most of the contamination, including what was once declared the most dangerous building in America, was not removed. 
but merely buried underground, not unlike the technique employed at Chernobyl. So read the rest of the article, friends. It's at The Observer. But I hope you understood the hot particle part. It really is the most important part of this whole show. So I really let me know if you heard it. I hope you did. And that brings us to the dum D of the day. <coughs> called You Are an Idiot. For those of you that don't know, the Dunce Cap of the Month award show is mailed out once a month, and um, you can help me pay to do that by uh, donating at the show. Oliver Gemmel writes, I was once stationed at the USS Enterprise CVN-65 first nuclear powered aircraft carrier eight nuclear reactors i'm surprised i don't glow in the dark hello liz got a run old friend we'll catch up soon i have to get a hold of him for the show that would be very interesting to hear some of his stories regarding that um the dumb of the day natural news Climate change hoax collapses as new science finds human activity has virtually zero impact on global temperatures. Um, this is Mike Adams, July 12th, 2019. I had missed this. I had to get this. Um, I don't know how I missed this because I'm usually on all this climate stuff. But this, this is, I think it links all through this, all of the science linked here, natural news. The climate change hoax has collapsed. A devastating series of research papers has just been published, revealing that human activity can account for no more than 0.01 degrees Celsius rise in global temperatures, meaning that all the human activity targeted by radical climate change alarmists, combustion engines, airplane flights, diesel tractors, have virtually no, virtually no measurable impact on the temperature of the planet. Finnish scientists spearheaded the research over, it's a bunch of right-wingers in America. Finnish scientists spearheaded the research, releasing the paper entitled, No Experimental Evidence for the Significant Anthropomorphic, that is to say, Man-Made Global Climate Change. The paper explains that IPCC analysis of global temperatures suffers from a glaring error, namely failure to account for influences of low cloud cover and how it impacts global temperatures. Natural variations in low cloud cover, which are strongly influenced by cosmic radiation's ability to penetrate Earth's atmosphere due to variations in the strength of our planet's mag magnetosphere, account for nearly all changes in global temperatures, the researchers explain. Nothing to do with driving your car. Nothing to do with going on vacation, heating your house, or ordering Uber. As this chart reveals, more cloud cover is inversely related to temperature. In other words, Clouds shield the surface of the Earth from the sun, providing shade cover cooling, while a lack of clouds results in more warming. Duh. That's by the chart there from 1985 to 2005, proving without a doubt the data graphed out for everyone to read. The evil white people in America Finnish, Finland, not Donald Trump. Sorry, guys. Cloud cover accounts for the real changes in global temperatures. This is further supported by researchers at Kobe Institute in Japan. The evil white Republicans, the Kobe University in Japan. Still not Donald Trump published a nearly simultaneous paper that reveals how changes in our planet's magnetic field govern the intensity of solar radiation that reaches the lower atmosphere, causing cloud formation that alters global temperatures. 
So two studies that weren't related to each other found the exact same thing to be true. None of them were evil white men in America. That study, published in Nature, that's not a right-wing publication, is called Intensified East Asian Winter Monsoon During the Last Geomagnetic Reversal Transition. And it states, Records of subarital scale climate variation during the last glacial and Holocene periods can be used to elucidate the mechanisms of rapid climate changes. At least one event was associated with a decrease in the strength of the Earth's magnetic field. Thus, climate records from the MIS-19 interglacial can be used to elucidate the mechanisms of a variety of climate changes, including testing the effect of changes in geomagnetic dipole field strength on climate through glacial cosmic ray-induced cloud formation. In effect, what it's saying is cosmic rays, which are normally deflected via the magnetosphere, are in times of weak or changing magnetic fields emanating from the Earth itself, able to penetrate further into the Earth's atmosphere, causing the formation of low-level clouds which cover the land in an umbrella effect that shades the land from the sun, allowing cooling to take place. This natural phenomenon is now documented to be the primary driver of global temperatures and not human activity. Still happy you're playing for the pan for the climate hoax? Carbon dioxide, in other words, isn't a pollutant to climate change alarmists have long claimed it to be. CO2 won't destroy the planet and barely has any effect on global temperatures. The IPCC's estimate of that effect is, according to Finnish researchers, about one order of magnitude too large or ten times the actual amount. Do you understand this here? The entire lie is crumbling, it has crumbled, it is gone. And I really, really hope that people are understanding what I'm saying here. The war on carbon is derived from sheer stupidity, the arrogance, and scientific illiteracy. It writes, the extreme alarmism of climate change lunatics, best personified by Alexandria ocasio Cortez insistence that humanity will be destroyed in 12 years if we don't stop burning fossil fuels is all based on nothing but fear-mongering, media propaganda, and faked science. The IPCC and the NRAA both routinely fudge temperature data to try to create a warming trend where none exists. Now remember, none of this was written by evil white men. As a matter of fact, it's written by doctors and scientists on the other side of the world. Use the thinking part of your brain. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. And please donate if you can at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com through PayPal. All right, good night, friends, and if you're watching this with someone you love, snuggle close. You never know when they won't be there anymore. Good night. God bless.